All right, so beginning of Tetris. I'm going to create a new sprite, and I'm going to use this sprite for all of the various purposes of my game. So I'm just going to grab just a basic square icon for mine. It's up to you which way you want to do it. The main thing is, is that you've got to make sure that the blocks that move and the blocks that are solid are the same size, because you don't want larger blocks appearing once that happens. Um, this guy I'm going to call my moving sprite. I'm just going to duplicate this for a wall sprite. And one more for a solid sprite. Now, for purposes of figuring out which one is which, I should probably make these different colors or else I will be very confused once my game starts running. So I think I'm going to make my moving ones, maybe I'll make them green. So let's see. So I'm going to replace that color with that color of green. I'm going to replace that color there. I'm going to replace that color there. Now one thing to watch out for with this particular sprite is that the corners are not visible. So I'm going to have to be careful of that in a moment. So let's see, what else should I do? Maybe I'll put this back in as black. And actually, I think that I'm just going to make it completely solid all the way around. There we go. All black. And I'm going to leave the center at 0, 0 for this. So the upper left of my blocks are going to be my center. Um, yeah, we'll get to that later. The walls. I'm also going to fill in the corners on this guy too, just to make sure that doesn't cause me problems. And the reason why is that I'm going to have to do some collision checking. And that upper left corner doesn't count for collision detection purposes. Uh, let's make you red, Mr. Solid Block, so that it's clear what's going on there. Red. 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 So, some basic sprites, just squares that I'm going to be using, and I'm just going to be repeatedly using those for my various parts. To be honest, that's most of my game, is those three sprites, at least for the purposes that of what I'm going to be doing. If you want other ones, that's fine, but I'm going to begin with this. OK, so three sprites. I should probably start in on objects next. So I'm going to create an object for each of these corresponding things. I move object. It's going to have the moving sprite. I'm going to create a wall object. It's going to have that sprite. And I'm going to create a solid object, which has that sprite. Something to watch out for. Do not use the name solid with nothing after it, because solid is a built-in variable. So if you just say solid, that actually is changing a variable. By the way, if you're ever curious about what all is built into the game, like what are variables that are built in, if you go under scripts up here, the menu, and you say, hey, show me all the built-in variables. These are all the things that are built into GameMaker. So for example, these are all the global ones. You may have heard of some of these, like, hey, look, room, score, lives. Mouse underscore X and mouse underscore Y. So all of those are the built-in variables that are global. And then when you get down to these blue ones where it says local, these are the things that every object has whenever you create one. 
So for example, it's got solid. Oh, that's a built-in variable. Speed, x, y, v speed, and then higher up, h speed. So those are all the built-in variables. All right. I would like to make it so that the wall has a parent which is solid. So right there is where I set that. So that way, whenever I'm talking about solid objects, I'm counting walls as well. And speaking of, both walls and solid objects, I'm going to make solid. So that's this, this solid checkbox. All right, so the reason I do that is when I have my moving blocks um, hitting one of these, I don't want them to move inside of the wall and then call the collision. I want them to actually stop when they do hit. All right. So those are the three objects I need to begin with. In the room, I'm going to create that, and I'm going to put in the wall for now. So let's see. In my game, I'm just going to have the wall go along the left side here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I think I'm going to go up from there. So in my game, I'm going to have 10 columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I'm going to use this area over here for score. And if you decide you want to do the next shape, it's up to you how long you want to make yours. Just keep in mind that the number of columns in this thing are going to matter later on. I believe the original has something like 12, but I'm not sure about that. OK, so at this point, I want to try creating a shape. Now, creating a shape is going to happen in a lot of different places in my code. And rather than repeating that code over and over again, I would rather have it be in one place and have each object call that. So this time, I'm going to actually create a script which multiple parts of my program are going to use. So to create a script, I can right-click on scripts and do create script, or you can click on this little code block up here. So this looks much like the drag and drop one we used in all our objects in the catch game. The only difference is this guy is going to get called by other objects. So I'm going to call this create shape. I'm going to use a capital S just because I'm that way and because Java does that as well. As long as you use a name that's consistent with uh, whatever your naming scheme is, it doesn't matter what you name it. Just make sure you aren't using spaces or anything like that. OK. So when I create a shape, I need to create four moving blocks, and I'm going to need to put them in a particular configuration. So to begin with, let me create a variable that keeps track of which one it is. So I'm going to create a variable called shape. And it's going to be a random number somewhere between, I don't know, how many shapes are up there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven different possibilities. So let's say 0 to 6, because I'm a computer scientist and we always start counting at 0. Random, how does that work again? So random returns a real number. Oh, I don't want a decimal. I want a particular number. So it looks like I random range sounds pretty good. Or I random, in my case, returns a random integer between 0 and x, and it includes x. So I'm going to say I random 6. So this is, shape is now a number between 0 and 6. The comment isn't necessary, but I find that it helps me to figure out what on earth is going on. Another way I could have done that is done the floor of random, which would give me an integer. All right, so if shape is 0, 
I'm going to create four moving blocks here. So I'm going to say that 0 is the square. Uh, by the way, two equal signs is not absolutely necessary. GameMaker will forgive you if you put in one. In Java, Java will not forgive you if you only put in one. All right, so if shape is 0, now I need to actually create the four moving blocks where they're supposed to be. Oh, well, where is that? So let's see. If I put my mouse over the room, down here at the bottom it'll tell me the x and y position. It turns out it tells me the x and y position of the grid intersection to which is above and to my left. So if I'm hovering here, 144.0, it's actually this one up here, this little spot here that I'm referring to. So let's see. I'm going to put my first square there. So that's going to be at 128.0. If I go back into my code, instance create 128, comma 0, and I'm creating a move block there. 